In this video, I'm going to be going through power questions that we often see in the HSC. So the first thing we need to know is we need to understand what is work. So work, 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 um, as you might know from Drake, who's like calories, no, kilojoules. So Drake is, uh, sorry, work is measured in joules because Drake is all about that bling, right? So work is equal to force times displacement. Then related to work is power. So power is measured, well, the what is the unit for power? Uh, so it's both a question and a statement. What is the unit for power? So power is measured as work over time. But what we see up here is that we often don't really use in the HSE questions, we're very rarely going to use this formula. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at this formula up top here. Power equals work divided by time. This is why we generally don't want to write weight as W. We usually write weight as mg. We can see down here I've written weight as mg. The reason for that is because W is for work. But we generally don't use work in our power questions. Instead what we'll do, it'll say that work is equal to force times displacement divided by time. Which, if we know that displacement divided by time is also equal to velocity, it means that our power formula is we can say power equals force times this, uh, velocity. Now, once upon a time, that didn't used to be in the formula sheet. Um, I have a formula sheet from like, 2012 that's all explained, and it's not on there. But I think about three years ago, at the time of recording, they started adding this on here. Before that, to help my students, I used to say, fight the power, fight the power FV, right? Like, um, uh, Flavor Flav in the Public Enemy uh, song, Fight the Power. And a flavor flavor wears a clock around his neck because he always wants to know what's the time, right? So what is the unit for power? Um, okay. Now when we're doing these sorts of questions, it's important that we look at um, the the. We're only looking for really in this case here. They told us the resistance to motion. Yeah, it's one point one point one kilonewton meters. Okay, this is exercise uh, 2.11. Now, in this case here, we can see pretty easily we already have F as being... Now, look at an F as total resistance to motion. Now, I normally wouldn't go to the effort of writing that, but this time around, I thought I'd, I'd include it. Total resistance to motion. Now, in that case, uh, we have F. F is the total force that is stopping the, uh, our car from driving along. And it's given as 1.1 kilonewtons. The velocity, we've been given the velocity, that's fine, it's, one, it's 110 kilometers per hour, but we can't use that unit, it's not an SI unit, so we're not going to get watts out of this question if we don't use the, if we use that unit. So what we need to do then is we need to convert it. How do we convert it? What would Ed Sheeran say? Oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, he would, what, what function, function? He's going to divide by 3.6, oh. good work. Okay, so 110 divided by 3.6 is? Big number. Okay, number, you guys should have calculators. Um, future generations would be like, if you guys had calculators out, I wouldn't be having to press the skip button right now. Okay, it is equal to 30.6 will do for me, um, meters per second. Okay, so that makes our, qu our equation pretty simple. It makes our equation power equals force times velocity. Force is given to us as 100, well, we're going to put it into base units, right? So we always really want to work with base newtons um, times 30.6, which is going to equal times 1100 zero zero equals power equals 33611 uh, watts. Now, we're going to convert that into kilowatts, so we're going to say that's 33,000, 33.6 thousand or kilowatts. And that's the amount of power that this car needs to provide in order to go, continue going at that speed. Now, uh, the next question we're going to look at is if we're at an angle. So, I'll clear this one off, and I'll stand over here so we can see our question a little bit better. So, in this question here, we have a total resistance to motion, um, but it's really, they've still given us, the, the, even though it's at an angle, they've given us the total resistance to motion. So it's, we're not taking into account uh, the, okay, 
The total resistance of motion in this case is what they're talking about is the friction in this case. And it can be very hard when you're reading the question to know whether or not you're looking at... I'm just going to read specific wording in this question. Um, the total resistance of motion is 30 newtons. Okay, so there's a total resistance of motion. They're talking about the friction on the road, right? In this case, there's an additional force that we can't see. Our F is not just the resistance to motion, but also the component of weight. Now, I call that, on this diagram here, I call that Wx. Now, the problem is, you heard me say earlier that I don't really like to use Wx because Wx, W is already used for work, and that can be confusing. So the reason we call it Wx is we imagine that we create our own set of coordinates where x is parallel to the surface of the road, right? And so we then have the weight. If we break down our weight, and I'm using the terminology I to use, which is mg, well, we can break down, remember, weight is always vertical. It's always down. It's always the hypotenuse, right? It's always those three things. And when we break it down, we're going we're gonna to have a component that's parallel with the surface and a component that's perpendicular to the surface. The component that's parallel to the surface is what I call Wx. But we're not going to use that terminology. We're instead going to call it mg sine theta, which is a bit of a mouthful. I'll, I'll appreciate, but that's what we're going to call it, mg sine theta. Now, the biggest clue that if you're getting a question like this, that you're probably going to have to do something with that is, otherwise you'd say, well, why are they giving us why are they giving us this? Um, why are they giving us this slope? Now the idea is that the steeper the slope, the more that that friction, that weight component. This is effectively the weight of the the effect of gravity, or that causes you to roll down the hill. In order for you to go up the hill, you're going to have to overcome that force. So the thing is, obviously, the steeper the road is, the more that's going to going to come into it. Now there's different ways you can do this. A lot of people, if you want to use mg sine theta then you're going to have to use uh, trigonometry to figure out what theta is. And that's fine, that's an approach you can do. And I'm still going to use this terminology, mg sine, sine theta, because it's the most accurate. But there is another way we can approach this. In this case here, they've told us that the weight of our vehicle, and it's the a bicycle plus the white rider, is 92 kilograms. And they've said, well, okay, if that's the mass of the rider, is 92 kilograms, that means that the weight, the combined weight, is going to be mg is equal to 920 newtons. Right? We know that's vertical, we know it's a hypotenuse, we know that it's down. And then we have our mg sine theta, uh, which is our down component. And this part is really important, the mg cos theta, we're going to need that later when we do future examples because mg cos theta is important for finding the friction because we can see here that wy is equal to n. They're the only two forces in that direction. So if we do some of the forces in the y direction, those two things are equal. So it means that we can say that n is equal to wy, which means that friction is equal to mu times n, which is, means friction is equal to mu times wy, which is saying that mu is equal to uh, sorry, friction is equal to mu mg cos theta, which we have mg cos theta is going to equal that. Those two are equal. So the friction is that times mu. And that makes sense. It's the direction pushing down on the vehicle, the perpendicular to the vehicle. Now, we're going to ignore that for the moment. I just want to highlight that the mg cos theta is important as well. Now, what I want to say then is, what we're told here is we're told we can calculate this using mg sine theta, but we, we're not given the angle. Instead, what we're given is we're given a triangle. We're given similar triangles. What we're told is that this distance here is 30 to 1, and then on this side, we're being told that this is 920 to some number. The problem is we're not given like to like. We don't know what this number is in this similar triangle. If we're using similar triangles to figure out our value, what is this number going to be? It's a hypotenuse, so a hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the, it's the square root of the sum of the square of the other two sides. So it's going to be 30 squared plus 1 squared. What's that number? 901. 901. So what's the square root of 901? I'm not knowing. It's going to be about 30, right? And so we're allowed to say, in this case, we're allowed to say that mg sine theta, in this case, is about equal to 920 divided by 30. Technically, 
it's equal to divided by 901. But because 901 is going to be so close to, because it's going to be so close to 30, we're just allowed to use 30. Where it's absolutely acceptable in the HSE, and sometimes in the answers, you'll see in the HSE answers, they've said you can just divide by 30. Even though we're actually dividing by 31, we're saying the ratio of, so I'll just, to make this entirely clear, I'm going to draw this diagram again. What we know is that if we have these two triangles, we've got this number that is 30, 1, and a number that is pretty much 30. And now ratios, we want to find x, and we know 920. So what we can write is x divided by 920 equals 1 divided by some number that's pretty close to 30. So what we can do is we can use our algebra to say x is equal to 920 divided by a number that's pretty close to 30. And that's exactly what we've done here. mg sine theta is equal to 900 divided by a number that's pretty much 30. So if you wonder, I don't understand how we're dividing by 30, it doesn't make sense. It's because it's so close to 30 that we're allowed to use 30. But if you want, you're allowed to do the trigonometry. You can find what sine is, or what theta is, and then use mg sine theta, whatever you want. I'm just going to tell you that pretty much everyone who does this professionally, and if you look at the books, I'm not a mechanical engineer, so I didn't ever do this professionally, but when I look at past HSE answers, this is very common, that we can just say this is effectively equal to 30. Nine, the square root of 901 is going to be very, very close to 30. Can someone type that in while I'm, I'm doing this? Okay, so in this situation here, we've got this, um, I'm going to clear this, this diagram now. And what we're going to say is <laughs> that our 30. f value it is 30, and as far as the calculator is concerned. 30.0166. Yeah, that's right. So within Six. our rounding error, it's 30. And the same as if it's 20 to 1. Once you started getting to like 4 to 1, which is an incredibly steep road, at 4, I don't even know if you can have a road that's that steep. At 4 to 1, oh, you probably, well, okay, so there is that time, I'll, I'll put a photo of like, when I was on the bus on Wanganui and the bus couldn't go up the hill and I, I took a photo and I'm like, I'm leaving a friction question. But generally speaking, any question you're going to get, you're allowed just to use 30 to 1 as just M, um, mg sine theta is just divide the number by that 30 or divide that number by 20, whatever the ratio is, whatever that slope ratio is. If they give you an angle, then you know how to do it. If they don't give you an angle, you can just divide by that slope number. Okay, so in our case here, we've said that f equals... Now, I've written this 30 in the, th the friction. They've given us the friction. They've made our life a little bit easier by giving us the friction. And I've lost my red pen. Um, <laughs> helpful, but not the one I was looking for. Um, Josh's clutch starts slipping on walking. I have a green pen and I've lost it, though. This will do. Okay. So, because this, in this 30. I don't want us to mix up which 30 is which. So what I'm writing here is that the friction, so we've got here our force is equal to the friction force, right, which we can just write like that, or I would often sometimes write as that, right, and our Wx, which I write this way, because I don't like to use Ws. So they've given us the friction force as 30, and then we've also got to, so we've got to overcome the friction, the, the bike rider has to overcome the friction of the road, and they also have to overcome the weight of their own weight that wants to slide down the hill, which we've said is equal to mg divided by, in this case, a number that's very close to 30. Right? And that's what we've got here. So which is equal to f is equal to 30 plus 920 divided by... 30.01, something like that. One six. Yeah, zero one six. Zero and one six six six. So in actual fact, we can just write that number is going to be ninety divided by thirty, and then so it's going to be thirty plus thirty, which is going to be um, sixty point six six. Okay. We now have already worked out our velocity. Oh, okay, our velocity is equal to 20 kilometers per hour. Which, what, um, what function are we going to use to do that? 
we're going to do 30 divided by 3.6. Oh, uh, yep. And that's going to give us meters per second. 8.3. Equals? 8 and 1. You get 8? I get 8 and 1. 30 no. divided by 3.6. No, it's 20. 20. 20. Okay, so power is going to equal force times velocity, which is going to equal 60.66 times 5.55, which equals 60.66 times 5.55 equals 306. And I just want to check that I'm in the right units. Um, that's going to be watts. Okay, thank you very much. Like and subscribe.